Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. Oh, how we love your law as our meditation all the day. And you, through your commandments, you make us wiser than our enemies. We ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to open the eyes of our understanding that we may comprehend the scriptures. Thank you that our eyes are enlightened to understand your word, your heart for the times in which we live. You are the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see and does not know, but we see you and we know you because you're not only with us, but you're in us. And we ask you this morning that you would increasingly form within us the character of our Lord Jesus Christ and to increasingly uh, bring about the reality of his kingdom and his dominion in our lives through our families and through the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody wholeheartedly say it. All right, well, let's get to work this morning. We are continuing on the principles of prevailing prayer. I want to encourage you to open your heart to receive. Um, You know, I don't uh, kind of scroll through the internet or just kind of download some preaching schedule um, in terms of bringing um, what, what I believe is God's message for us as a body concerning our mission and our vision. It's something that we we. We seek in prayer. We seek in fasting, the heart of God. Lord, what are you saying for this particular group of people um, unique to us for this time, our distinct fingerprint in the world? Um, Again, yesterday we talked about every church has a fingerprint the same way that individuals have fingerprints. There's something unique and a marker that identifies us as a body that makes us distinct from other churches. We have a unique contribution and a unique calling to the world. We have a fingerprint, and we seek the heart of God for our lives, our families, our callings, our destinies, individually and collectively during this time. And the, the message that is, that is burning in my heart right now is the message of the principles of prevailing prayer. God is calling us to prevailing prayer. We all pray. We've all been praying. We know how to pray to some extent, but let's be honest. There are deeper levels of understanding prayer, the effectiveness of prayer, if prayer really is what the Bible says that it is and can really do what the Bible says it can do, everything changes. As I said before, um, we'll see it from the scriptures. The Bible talks so many times about one individual who impacted circumstances um, in a very significant way. If there are 2.6 billion professing Christians in the world, we're not praying right. (laughs) If the world's in the condition that it's in and prayer is what the scriptures say it is, and the the believers, if we're praying the way that the word tells us to pray, we'll see it effectively and fervently. The world has to change and should be different. So at some point, we have to go back to God and, and sense that he's calling us to deeper levels of prayer deeper levels of understanding uh, prayer. So we, we're, we're immersing ourselves in this for a while. This is the seventh part of the series. And so let's just dig in and see how far we get today. I want to talk specifically about repairers of the breach. And there's, there's many different dimensions of this teaching. But today, repairers of the breach. Remember, I, I've shared with you that intercession is, um, is not just communication with God, uh, but really intercession means intervention. Intercession means intervention. We don't pray just to be heard. We pray to bring about change on the earth. We pray to see circumstances different. Not just prayer for the sake of prayer. Prayer is a means to affect change and transformation on the earth by the power of God. And wherever there are situations and circumstances in our life, in and around our life, that are out of alignment with the word and the will of God, we should be rigorous in prayer to see that situation comes. Jesus says it this way, thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. There's so much out of alignment between heaven and earth now. And prayer is what brings alignment between heaven and earth in your life individually, in your family, in our communities, in our nation, and across the world. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, it's it's the means that the Lord himself communicated to us, 
in terms of how do we bring about transformation in the earth. So we're going to talk about that. So when I talk about repairs of the breach, let's take a look here. What is a breach? That's not a word that's in our, in our vernacular, something that we use every day. But what is a breach? A breach is two things. Number one, a breach is an act of breaking or failing to observe a law, agreement, or a code of conduct. Breaking or failing to observe a law, an agreement, or a code of conduct. Uh, we're all familiar with the terminology, a breach of contract. An agreement was signed, somebody breaks their part of the deal, we call that a breach. Um, let's just say Adam breached God's agreement and God's covenant. He breached it. He broke, he broke, he failed to observe God's law. There was a breach. Very important to understand when we say Adam, Adam is not really a proper name. We call him Adam with a capital A. Really, it should be Adam with a lowercase a. Adam means mankind. And so there's, there's Adam with a capital A, Adam with a lowercase a, but really Adam, the person that we talk about Adam, the proper name, really more generally his name means mankind. He represents all of humanity. And of course, Pauline thought theology, Paul explains to us that if one man sin, all, all sin. Because Adam was mankind. Mankind was in him. If one man breached the contract, guess what? All of humanity breached the contract with God. Are you with me? This is where we are in the world. This is very, very important for us to understand and to, and to discern the, the penalties and the consequences, the, the travails that we see in the earth, the groanings that we see in the earth all backs up to the fact that this man and mankind broke a contract or an agreement with God. Oh, but you want to talk about the good news. Where the first Adam breached the contract. Oh, glory to God. The last Adam kept every part of it. Perfect in obedience, perfectly righteousness, and we become the righteousness of God in him. Come on, give him some praise this morning. He repaired that agreement, that disharmony that we had with God, the breach. Jesus is the ultimate repairer of the breach. But not only him, we're going to see John chapter 17. Jesus says, Father, as you sent me into the world, I'm also sending them. So we're going to talk about us being repairers of the breach. There's something that God is calling every one of us to fix. The first part of a breach has, has to do with an agreement. Number two, the second part of that. A breach is also a gap in a wall, a barrier or a defense, especially one made by an attacking army. So you can breach an agreement, but a breach is also a gap in a wall or barrier of some kind. Uh, read the book of Nehemiah. The whole book is about fixing the breach in the wall uh, from a defensive position. And we're going to see in Scripture again that believers are called to be repairers of the breach, both the word of God and uh, the walls that, are, that have been broken down. Um, as I kind of consider, I'm going to dig in here and get a little bit practical to help us understand the condition of the world today. But as I really consider current events in the world and as we draw closer to what we call, the Bible calls the day of the Lord. Everybody say the day of the Lord. Big deal. We've got to get very familiar with the day of the Lord, Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, when Jesus describes the day of the Lord. That is the target. That is the bullseye for believers, is understanding what the Bible calls the day of the Lord. We'll come back to that. But considering what's happening in the world and considering the trajectory that we're on concerning the day of the Lord, I'm seeing each more and understand more and more that God is a God of strategy. He's a God of strategy. God's word is his strategy. This is, this is a strategy for us in terms of us living out his plans as, the, as, the kingdom of, as kingdom citizens in the kingdom of God. He's a God of strategy. A strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a specific outcome, and strategy is always used in military sense. Now, we've been talking about He's a God of war and those things for the past few weeks. A strategy is always employed in military conflict. God is a God of strategy, a specific plan to produce a specific outcome. His word is his strategy for us. Let's dig a little bit deeper here. Biblical faith is evolutionary and progressive in nature. 
very important. As we're talking about repairs of the breach, prevailing prayer, not just prayer, but prevailing prayer, prayer that is more and more and more effective, we have to understand that biblical faith is evolutionary and progressive in nature. Take a look with me at Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Paul speaks to this and he says this, for in it, the it that he is talking about is in verse 16 when he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And so when it says here, for it, he's talking about the gospel. So for in it, in the gospel, listen at this, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed. How? From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In it, the gospel, the word of God, it reveals something to us, the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God is revealed to us from faith to faith to faith to faith. The faith, evolutionary and progressive revelation. Biblical faith, faith evolves and it's, it's, it's always growing in revelation from faith to faith to faith. It's, it's appropriate to say the just shall live by faith, but it's more appropriate to say the just shall live by faith to faith. Why do, why do I say it that way? And why do we need to think in terms of the just shall live by faith to faith? Here's the issue. The just living by faith, you will plateau. Come on, you with me this morning? If, if, you, if you just say, well, the just shall live by faith, somewhere in your heart, in your mind, if you ever settle that I'm living by faith, you plateau. You begin to level off concerning your calling, your destiny, your effectiveness, what God can use, do in and through your life, whether or not you're seeing the power of God, that electricity, whether or not you're seeing miracles, signs and wonders, whether you're taking new ground, whether you're having breakthroughs consistently in your life, it simply means that we've plateaued and then we say, well, the just shall live by faith. No, the just shall live by faith to faith, to faith, and then to faith, and then to faith, and then to faith, and then to faith. An evolutionary, progressive revelation of the righteousness of God being revealed more and more and more and more and more from faith to faith to faith. I want to encourage you this morning. Come on, it's time to go to the next level of faith. Wherever you are, whatever you've done, get this, wherever, where, whatever you've done, you already did that. Whatever you have, you already got it. Wherever you've been, you've already been there. What's the new place and the new thing you're after in your life? Come on, what, what's, the, what's the new thing that you're doing? No more plateaus, incline. What's, what's the next thing that's on your agenda? What kind of vision, what kind of passion, what kind of intensity drives you to get out of the bed that forces you to pray and to seek God in a way like you've never done before? What kind of vision is pressuring you to sow the biggest seed that you've ever sown to get a harvest you've never seen before? What kind of vision for a new thing are you carrying to inspire you to do something new to go to another level of faith? And here's the deal. Here's the deal. In a world that is broken for the repairs of, of the breach, watch this. That process of going from faith to faith, get this, it reveals the righteousness of God. If the righteousness of God is not being revealed in a lost world, in a world of unrighteousness, it's because the church has plateaued. The only way for God's righteousness, not only his righteous nature, but his right ways of living and doing life, fixing all of the broken problems in society. We, um, our nation, the world is a mess. And the only way for there to be a revelation of God's righteousness to fix it all, the church has got to go to another level of faith. Are you with me this morning? Yes. <laughs> Repairs of the breach. It's the, only, it's the only way, the only way for circumstances to ever be repaired. You and I have to go to another level of faith. And there will be a revelation 
of God's righteousness and his ability to make it right and to fix it when the church rises. Somebody say amen. Come on. (laughs) His capacity to repair things is connected to your next level of faith. And the same thing is true for us as a church body. The same thing is true for every church, for the church universally. God's capacity to repair is tied to our next level of faith. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's go a little bit deeper here. There there are a few occasions in Scripture, and we're going to take a look, where, um, where Paul... Uses a, uses a very important term. That term is dispensation. Everybody say dispensation. dispensation. I'm going to look at a, look at a few, few of these. It's something that's really kind of unique to Paul. He talks about dispensation. Dispensation is a, it's a Greek word, oikonomia, which means two things. It means administration or management. He talks about dispensation, the administration or the management. God, think about, think about it practically a dispensation is what it, what it says. It's a dispensing or a dispersing. So when we read about faith to faith, and when I talk about biblical faith being both evolutionary and progressive, from faith to faith, the Bible talks about a dispensation, a dispersing, a, a, a dispensing of something from God progressively. Very, very important let me give you an analogy. Um, if, if all of the, the water from Lake Michigan showed up at your house all at once, it would destroy you. It'd be like, the Noah, like Noah's flood. Man. <laughs> if all of the water of Lake Michigan shows up all at once, destructive. Something, something that is absolutely, get this, life-saving and life-giving becomes life-threatening if it comes to you too much, too fast. You remember how the Bible says God didn't give them the land all at once? Come on, folks, we're talking about principles of how the kingdom works. God didn't give them the land all at once, progressively. See, it grows, and so if, 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 if it all shows up too much, too fast, it's destructive. God, he's a, dis, he's a God of dispensation. Now, here's the thing that saves you from the destruction of Lake, of Lake Michigan and all that water showing up in your house all at once. It's called your faucet. <laughs> your faucet is a lifesaver. Because, but get this, it's, it's a regulator Here's the deal. You can basically get as much water as you want and as you need, but it's dispensed through a regulator called a faucet, and now it becomes productive. Your faith works like a faucet. Your faith works like a faucet, and it can be a 30-degree, 30-fold valve, or a 60-fold valve, or a 100-fold valve. Whatever, whatever kind of faucet, the capacity of your faucet determines how much flows. Your faith, your heart, and your mind works like a faucet. And the more you stretch your faith and the more we stretch our paradigm, it determines that flow from every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth. The faucet in terms of the flow from heaven, from kingdom of God down to the earth has to do everything with faith and our prayers. We're regulating the faucet. Are you with me this morning? Very, very important for us to understand this. So God is a God of, of dispensation. Let's take a look how Paul talks about this. Ephesians chapter one, verse nine. He says this, having made known to us, big deal, the mystery of his will. Everybody say mystery of his will. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, God's will, his ways are a mystery. They really are. It's a mystery. That means means his, his will can't be known without an intentional dispensation 
or revelation or dispersing so that we can understand it. Remember Matthew 11? Jesus, Jesus actually prayed in Matthew 11, Father, I thank you that you've hidden these things from them. But he, but he reveals them to, to his people. Jesus actually prays, Father, I thank you that you, you've hidden this. Remember Matthew 16 when Jesus tells Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. You couldn't get that from any human. Come on, I'm going, I'm going somewhere with this. In the days of all of the um, cultural, socio-political, humanistic experts that have so much to say about how to fix everything in the world. When the scriptures tell us the righteousness of God is only revealed from faith to faith, not from a university. Not from a news channel, not from a think tank. God's righteousness to fix and put everything right and in order is only revealed from faith to faith, not through human means. I don't mean any disrespect, but listen, in some cases, you're talking to Dr. Dipstick. <laughs> Come on, I'm, talk, I'm talking humanism, human wisdom. Yes. The righteousness of God is only revealed from faith to faith. The Bible says, us, it says that his mystery is a, is, his mystery, his will is a mystery. Listen to this, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself Watch this, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth in him. The mystery of his will, God's righteousness, his strategy, everything that he's doing tells us here according to his own good pleasure. This is God gets delight in him, something that he has settled and purposed in himself and determined to do to fix society in the world. But he says this, in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, God is progressively evolutionary faith. I'm talking about progressive faith. He's doing so. He's dispensing something over time to get us to the place that he calls the day of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Let me, let me be very practical about this. I'm, I'm coming at this from a number of different ways. Let me, let me talk about this repair of the breach. Our society has plenty of dysfunction in it right now. And the world will only become progressively darker and more chaotic. So let me, let me shift for a moment and talk about um, our children and our grandchildren. I've, I've concluded, I've come to a place in my own life, I'm not living for me anymore. I don't do this for me anymore. I'm doing this for the generations to come, for our kids and our grandkids. That's why I'm in this. We're gonna leave, we're gonna leave them something. We're gonna be faithful to leave them something that they will need to stand. That's, that's what drives me now. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna leave something for the next generation. Why, why is this so important? Concerning the dispensation and the fullness of the, of, the times, of the times, God is constantly dispensing. So get this. Our children and our grandchildren will receive a greater dispensation than we've received to fix problems that we can't fix. God is dispensing things over time. Every successive generation in God is receiving a dispensation that the previous generation didn't get to address and deal with some things that they'll have to fix and address that we can't fix. Very, very important for you to track with me when I, when I talk about this. Many, many parents, um, be relevant here, many parents I find, and I, 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 I hear this a lot sometimes when I go and speak and talk about zero victim and things and do conferences and meetings. I hear this a lot. Many, many parents, even Christian parents, we we find ourselves in a position where many parents don't understand a lot of the confusion and the things that are happening in society today. 
Many, many parents don't understand what's happening in the, fir- in the world and some of the confusion concerning even what we call social justice issues. And something that I find a lot, I hear it is common. A lot of parents with what they believe are biblical va- values tell me that there's a total disconnect with their children. Even though their children were raised in the church, the parents are saying, this is what I believe, these are my values, but there's a total disconnect with their children. One of, one of the reasons and one of the things that's important for us to understand is that there is a different dispensation for your children and your grandchildren that you didn't get. Are you tracking with me? There are some things they're, they're going to get from God and they are getting from God that we didn't get for them to live in a world that we didn't have to live with and for them to solve something that we didn't solve. And many times the restrictions of our traditional values hinders us from recognizing the new dispensation that God is wanting to give them that you don't understand because it's not for you. Come on, we're talking about repairing the breach and how the righteousness of God is, is revealed from, from faith to faith. The safest, the safest place to deal with injustice in society is in the church. Let's just talk about what's happening culturally. The best place and the safest place to deal with all of the problems and the issues that are happening in the world is in the church. And we can't be dismissive about the breach out there. The world is really broken. Injustice is really, really real. We can't act like it doesn't exist. No, the, the, the wall has been breached. It's real. But we got to understand there's a greater dispensation that our children have to deal with something that we don't, we don't deal, and we can't be dismissive of it. Because here's why. If we don't acknowledge and if we don't support and invest in their dispensation, the world begins to feel and think that the church is absolutely irrelevant to the real problems of the world. And it's Jesus saying, when the salt loses its savor, it's of no use. Are you tracking with me? All the breaches and the problems in the world, the righteousness of God is only revealed from faith to faith, and there's progressive dispensations that are happening from generation to generation. Come on, I'm I'm digging and unpacking some stuff so that we can get it, so that we can be effective in repairing the breach. Are you with me? Come on, I know know this is a lot. Let 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 me make something... You guys, man, what's in him? I've been to the Holy Land, man. I... Let, me, let me make something comfortable that's typically very uncomfortable. Let me make it, make it comfortable. And believe me, our, our church, we're graced to deal with what's happening in the world today. This is our finest hour. We're graced for this. <laughs> we're prepared for it. Let me make something comfortable that's very uncomfortable. When I talk about repairing the breach, the righteousness of God being revealed from faith to faith, the salt not losing its savor. Let me give you something that's that's really, really practical. Think about this, and I'm going to be delicate how I deal with this. Do you know know Jim Crow wasn't that long ago? Everybody knows Jim Crow. it, it It was not that long ago. It's, it's demonic. Can you imagine in our beautifully diverse church this morning, can you imagine me and Joey not being able to drink from the same water fountain? Can you imagine me and Joey not being able to use the same washrooms? Can you imagine us dividing this place up so that we got separate seating sections? That is an abomination from the pit of hell. And it wasn't that long ago, which, which means that some folks living or at least their parents participated in it and believed in it and supported it. Folks, that was not that long ago. There, is a, there are breaches in America that have been broken. And only the church can repair the breach. It's only the righteousness of God 
that can fix all those things. I tell you all the time, it's not a skin problem, it's a sin problem. It's demonic. It's demonic. But whenever there is a breach in God's word, I told you first the breach is a, is, a, is a break in an agreement or a law. Whenever there's a breach in God's word, it always produces a breach in the wall. And there are breaches all over a nation because our nation is deviated from the word of God. And here's the deal. If, if the church doesn't fix the issue by the righteousness of God from faith to faith, I'm going to tell you what happens. If we, don't, if we don't address injustice and these kinds of things in society, having the wisdom of God, the spirit of truth, the word of God, the blood of Jesus, the cross, and all the resources, if we don't fix injustice and, and deal with these issues in society, I'm going to tell you what happens. The pagan culture, if we don't define it, they'll define it and corrupt it and teach it to our kids to deal with something that we didn't have the courage to deal with. I'm telling you what's happening in the world. If we don't get out in front of it and reveal the righteousness of God from faith to faith, they, if we let them define it and we don't define it as sin, it's wrong, it's evil, we need to repent. If we don't define it, then the world will define it and then they corrupt it and then they feed it back to our kids and feed it to a generation because we didn't have the courage to deal with it, to reveal the righteousness of God from faith to faith. Are you with me? Come on, I'm talking about repairing the breach this morning and, and prevailing prayer. Somebody say amen. amen. We can't ignore it, can't act like it's not, it's not there. It, it, is, it is ridiculous to think that any, and I'm, I'm not being disparaging, but I'm telling you, it is, it is, it is, it is an indictment to the name of Jesus to think that anybody in society can be better in compassion ministry than the church of Jesus Christ. No one's more compassionate than Jesus. And we're called to be his ambassadors. And I'm telling you as a church, we are called and anointed to repair the breaches in our society. And here's the deal. All of the issues that are going on, we have to be able to reveal the righteousness of God from faith to faith and let them know that when God who is the God of justice. Are you with me? Yes. All of the talk about justice, everybody wants justice in the world. At what point does the church stand and say, well, God is the God of justice? But the way, that he, the way that he gets justice is not by tearing up society. Watch this, we have to say, but I will show you a more excellent way. I will show you a more excellent way. It's our, it's our responsibility to do that and to repair the breach in society. Folks, it is always a problem whenever, whenever society, whenever we try to fix problems the world's way, that's, that's, that's diminishing returns all day. Whenever The only hope for society is the righteousness of God. It's the righteousness of God. And now then we are ambassadors for Christ. I, I mean, listen, Moses, Moses took his, he was, he was skilled in the ways of the Egyptian. And he marched his little self self social justice mind itself out and tried to get deliverance the Egyptian way. You know what God said in effect, Moses, let me drag your, your little self right out here into the wilderness for 40 years until I can purge you. Come on, folks, are you listening to me? Let me I'm going to drag you out into the wilderness and you're going to sit out there with the scorpions and the snakes and the rocks and the hot sun until I can get all of that garbage out of you. And you know that I am. I have heard the cry of my people. I know their sorrows. I've seen their afflictions. I've heard their cries and 
I have come down to save them. Until you tell them that I am has sent me. Don't do it Pharaoh's way. Don't do it the Egyptian way. Don't do it according to the socio-political way. I want to reveal the righteousness of God that I am Jehovah's sick canoe, the God of righteousness. I will deliver my people my way. And after 40 years, Moses apparently finally got the message. What's that in your hand, Moses? A rod. You know, Isaiah chapter 11 says there's going to, uh, there's going to arise from Jesse a rod, a stem, a branch. That rod is Jesus, the word of God. He says, I'm going to use that rod, which is representative of my word, for you to go down and deliver my people to bring them out of bondage and to the promised land. It was the righteousness of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, you talk about what's, what's happening, repairing the breach. I can't give you too much. I talk about this a lot. This is, this is especially part of our vision for our, our children's ministry. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I shared this with our children's ministry team. Our, our vision for our, our children's ministry comes from, from Daniel chapter one. When... During the time of Babylonian exile, Daniel and his friends, of course, were carried down to Babylon. Now, here's the issue. If you study, study the, the, the passage there, they were taught what the Bible calls the language of the Chaldeans. In other words, Babylonian culture, the ideology, the religion, the values, of Nebuchadnezzar and his paganism, they taught Daniel and his friends all of that literature and that language, the ways of the Babylonians. Get this. But Daniel and his friends carried within them the covenant of Jehovah. Watch this. They weren't insulated, protected, absolved, from the influence of Babylon, but get this, he that was in them was greater than he that was in the world. We could say they were in Babylon. Oh, but Babylon never got in them. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I can swim in Babylon. You can put me in the king's court. I can serve. I can work next to the eunuchs. I can, I can serve the king with all my heart, bring him food. I can work in this job. I can work in that job. I can work at that university. I don't care where you put me. It's not going to get in me. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in himself that he would not eat the king's meat. And guess what? Babylon didn't affect Daniel. Daniel affected Babylon. <laughs> it's, it's important to understand, get this, that And I I make the distinction. In Babylonian culture, the king gave them names and gave them a new identity. The Babylonian king says, you're going to be called Belshazzar, giving you a new name. You're Shadrach. I'm giving you a new name. You're Abednego. You're Meshach. I define you. I'm giving you a new identity. This is who I say you are. You know what they got with themselves? They never use those names. They always use their Hebrew names. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Don't call me Belshazzar. Don't call me Shadrach. Don't call me Meshach. Don't call me Abednego. My name is Hananiah. That's my covenant name from Jehovah. That's my covenant name. If we're going to repair the breach, we've got to raise a generation of children and grandchildren. Come on, I haven't forgotten about the dispensation. Now, we're going to see the next time. We won't get to it today. Paul talks about the dispensation of God's grace that was given to me for you. Big deal. The dispensation, the pouring out more, the dispensation of God's grace given to me for you. There's a dispensation that God gives to us and to our children, to us, but it's not for us. It's for the people around us 
It's for the world. That dispensation is to repair the breach. It's to, it's to fix the problems that are in society today. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Repairs of the breach. That's what God has called us to. <laughs> Y'all got me all off here. Let's take a look at, at that verse. I just quoted that. Let's look at Ephesians chapter, chapter 3, verse 2. I want to show it, show it to you. Ephesians 3, verse 2. Paul says this, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation. Everybody shout dispensation. dispensation. Remember now, from faith to faith. This is, this is why... It is so critically important for us to continue to believe God for families to serve God together. That's our, that's, our, that's our mission statement, to make and train followers of Jesus Christ and build strong families by understanding, embracing, and doing God's word, preparing people for the day of the Lord. To make and train followers of Jesus Christ and build strong families by understanding, embracing, and doing God's word and preparing people for the day of the Lord. It's the mission is what we exist for as a church. And it's why we have to continue to believe God for families, because there is a dispensation and something progressive that's being handed down from generation to generation. Something's got to be a mantle has to be passed down. Covenant, principles, inheritance, legacy has to be passed down. He says here, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now, here's here's when it gets powerful and a force multiplier is introduced. When, when families serve God together, I as a child not only receive the dispensation that God gives to me, I get the dispensation that God gave my parents and my grandparents. And every, every successive, successive kingdom generation is getting a new dispensation of God's grace on top of the grace that is already operative in your family. Come on, folks. This is, this is how the kingdom works. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the 12 patriarchs. You see something being built over time. Line upon line, precept upon precept. The righteousness of God being revealed from faith to faith to faith. It's evolutionary and it's progressive. And I'm telling you, our children and our grandchildren need it. Paul tells us again that where sin abounds, watch this. He says grace always superabounds. Don't sweat what's happening in the world. We don't have to complain about it. We don't have to be intimidated. We don't have to cry about it. We're here to fix it and repair it. Because of the dispensation of God's grace, get this, he says, which was given to me, not for me, but for you. I want to ask you this morning to contemplate What is the new thing? What is the new dispensation of God's grace in your life that you are delivering to the world and the people around you? What, what, what breach are you repairing? Every one of us is called to fix something. Every one of us is called to fix something and to repair. The dispensation of God's grace given to me for you, verse 3, and how... That by revelation, he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Folks, listen at this. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and his prophets. It says there are some things that haven't been revealed before that God is just now making known in this dispensation. We'll continue this next time in terms of what it means for us to repair the breach. I'm telling you how God is going to fix society. There's a greater dispensation of his grace. 
and his righteousness will be revealed all around us and in the world when we go to another level of faith. Now, I know you got something out of the word today. I'm not, even going, I'm not even going to ask, did you get anything out of the word? Be encouraged, folks. Come on. We got, we got work to do. Come on. Stand well, up. friends, I know you were blessed today because God's word is a blessing. Anytime the word of God is taught, anytime the praises and the worship of God goes forth and God's people gather friends, it is a time of great blessing. And we've been blessed this morning to go out into the world and to reach those around us to be a blessing, friends. Don't uh, just hoard the good thing that God has done in your life today, friends. Share it freely you receive. Go out and freely give and sharing the goodness of God, the love of God with a world that is uh, very, very dark, a world that is in, in great need of God's people being both light and salt as Jesus commanded us and taught us too, friends. We wanna hear from you, uh, go ahead and Send us a message in the chat section of today's service. Let us know how you were blessed. Send us an email at any time at prayer at insightchurch.org. We just want to hear from you and know that you are doing well. On behalf of our pastors and our elders, uh, we're praying for you and covering you and your family with prayer, speaking God's blessing over you all the time. And we're believing that you are experiencing the most fruitful and most productive years of your life and your walk with the Lord. Be encouraged because some greater things are still to come. Why do I say that? Jesus is high priest of good things to come, friends. He guarantees that your future will always be better than your past. In Jesus' name, friends. Don't forget to give and get your seed in the ground. As I shared before, scan the QR code that you see there, text to the number on the screen. Uh, mail your support to our a post office box or visit our website at any time at insightchurch.org to plant your seed. Seed is no good until it is placed in the ground. This is the time for us to plant and to receive a great harvest from the Lord. Just before we go, I want to speak the blessing of the Lord over you and over your family by simply saying to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, friends, and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, friends, uh, be well, be encouraged. Always remember that Jesus loves you, Pastor Sharon, and I love you. I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>